Let's go, man. Good, how about you? Very good, thank you. What time is it for you? Okay. Huh? What time is it for you? 4.02 a.m. A.m.? Yeah. Wow. Did you just get home? <laughs> I get home at uh, 3.30. Yeah. Wow. So. How was your day? Yeah, busy. Busy, busy. So when you when you first heard about Yahusha, was it? How did it impact you? I mean, was it instant or was it just kind of you just got? We um we were part of a really tight group, um, and so I often wonder if I had personally found fossilized customs for myself, would I have even given it the time of day? Um, yeah. It was mainly because we were in this tight group and uh, Chris was like our pastor and uh, okay. he was so passionate about it and he was always teaching love and it was always about love for us like we were always we were having this love experience like and so because he was like him and Victoria were like my second parents and right. uh, in fact my real parents stepped away from us because they were in the same assembly as us but when we started walking this way they just left they didn't want to go with Yahusha they couldn't handle they could handle that it was his name they could handle that it was J-E-S-U-S -S in Hebrew that's as far as they could go but to face that it was an actual different person they couldn't handle, <laughs> they couldn't handle that because that would, oh. mean, that would mean they'd have to cut ties with all their other friends from all their other circuses they'd been to you know, because they were still having, yeah. they were still meeting up with them and having little social things, and so yeah, they couldn't handle that. Um, they couldn't handle being cut, cut off like that, separated. So they walked away. But yeah, it was really impacting for us because we were in an Indonesian circus at the time, and I think that yeah, things started erupting, and there were arguments and. Chris started telling them about the word holy. They kept using this word holy and they, he kept saying, it's not, that's not the right word. <laughs> mm. Set apart, holy was this. And they, and they were going off their face about this one word, holy. It's like, well, that's what you're going off about. <laughs> you know, there's plenty more. Isn't it incredible? Hey? One word. Yeah. And uh, so in the end, there's just so much pressure and... They were accusing Chris of, you know, being possessed by a demon and everything like all that because he was trying to, you know. Anyway, he announced to us one night, he said, I've had enough of the Indonesian circus. He said, Victoria and I are walking away from it. He said, uh, you're all welcome to join us if you like and we'll start our own assembly. Because this is still when we were sort of still Christian, you know, still didn't. And so being in an assembly was what we thought was the way to do it. So he said, we're starting our own, and uh, you're welcome to join us if you like. And so because we're with him to start with, we were with Chris and Victoria before we went to the Indonesian service, we said, yeah, hell yeah. So, and then uh, over the course of the next couple of years, most of us moved up to Cairns, because we were all in Sydney, we moved up to Cairns, up the yeah. top of Australia, and everybody's still up there except Amy and I, we went back down to Sydney about five, six years later, opened up a salon there, hated it, hit the road in a caravan. Now we're in Malakuta and uh, staying put here for a while. So, right. um, so yeah, it was impacting, well, you know, it's the same for everybody. I, yeah. I, uh, it's the same for everybody. Everybody, everybody has specific strongholds and specific sins and specific paths but um, on the whole he's not a respecter of persons so I've come, yeah, to, I've come to face the more people you talk to the more you realise it's just the same process for everybody so when you're talking to somebody you can kind of it's not a matter of saying oh I'm better or worse than you it's just a matter of seeing that every, you can see where everybody's at you can see yeah. because everybody has to go through the same process um and all the circumstances might be 
individual, but um, the overall process is the same for every single person coming out. And so, yeah, it's full on. Heartbreaking. You know? Um, yep. Totally devastating when you face, you know, you feel sick when you read that book. And then, yeah, and then you have friends and family who tell you you're a pagan and uh, you're in a cult and uh, you're a hideous person. My brother in law's a pastor, so, you know, um, we're cut off from them. And I went, I went about a year and a half ago, I went to make it right with him because his main thing was there's a scripture somewhere that says, do not have any fellowship with somebody who's denied JSUS. Um, that was his scripture, something like that. And because I walked away and denounced JSUS, yeah, you know, not really like that, but you know, you, you get what he meant. And so I said to him, I said, you know, it's kind of the same. It's all about love, mate. You know, I said we've just sort of gone further over here in this direction. You know, so, you know we can still get along. But he just told me I was deluded. He, uh, you know. If you're still hanging out with that Chris fella and, you know, Lou and all them, you're deluded. So I thought, okay, well, I tried. So, and it's heartbreaking, you know, they've just had a child and they don't want anything to do with us. So I thought, you know, fine, fine. But, you know, as you were saying the other day, you guys have been through the same thing. So it's, you kind of get to the point where you just want to keep going. Keep going. Pray for them, but, you know... Right. You know. Jennifer and I was trying to figure out, so you and Amy have, from what we understood, you and Amy have come, been married as long as you've known Yahushua then. Pretty much. Um, we got, wow. When we got married, yeah, we were married about a year before. We had a big Pentecostal, we had a big Pentecostal wedding. Big Pentecostal yeah. Indonesian thing. Oh, so, so did we. <laughs> yeah. So it was about a year after we got married. Yeah. Wow. So we've been married um, nine years. And so we've been in Yahush for about eight years. When we first got immersed, it was Yeshua. Not, oh, yeah. It was Y-A-H. Like, we never went for the E at any point. It was Y-A-H, Shua. Um, and then we went up to Cairns and... We read Lou's thing and it was Yehushua. So we thought, yeah. oh, we better get re-immersed. Uh, even though Lou says, no, you don't have to. But um, we did at the time. And then it got honed again to Yehusha. So we thought, oh, that's great. We don't even have to get re-immersed. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was good. I don't think it's going to change again now. So It's always going to be clean though, right? Oh, yeah. So I, I can't, I just can't handle all those people that are like this is how Hebrew is like Lou gets his flashcards out and explains it this is how it is and yet they still no nah, we're going to do Yahweh it's like yeah, you know, it's okay like I know you've written all these books with Yahweh and it's okay like the first five or six editions of Fossilized Customs had YHWH in it yeah. Lou doesn't care because you got to keep going to stand there and sort of say, well, no, this is, I'd have to replace all my books. Well, you don't have to. Just wait till they run out and then change it before you print it again. You know, right. like, but that's just one thing in the whole body. It's that everybody's nuts, you know. They, yeah, I, I don't understand that. You, you say the letter W, it's, it's telling you what it is. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, you know, I, when it comes to Yahuwah spelling his name, I mean, they pronounce it just as I do without the W. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I don't think having the... De Does the W give you any more insight than not having it? I don't know. Yeah. What is... You know? Yeah. Of course, of course, people have shown that, you know, there's Yahweh that's... I've, heard, I've seen some stuff about how it refers to uh, different planets or something. or it, But there's no E in the Hebrew language either. So yeah. I, it's, I don't know, it's it's so simple. I think 
people trying to make it out more than what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Chris hit the nail on the head when he said that there's a big um, religious thing trying to raise its ugly head. It's trying to do what they've done in the Christian scene, and they're doing it now in the Messianic thing. Like, I would never tell anybody I'm a Messianic. I don't even feel like I'm a Messianic. I don't... That's just... Oh. I'm just a Nazarene, mate. I wouldn't even tell anybody that, probably. I just, you know, but I'm a Nazarene. Like, it's, yeah. it's simple. It's messy anything. They don't know where, they, where they're coming or going. they got J-S-U-S, G-O-D, Yahweh, Yeshua. they got, like, all sorts of pagan titles in there, and it's like, well, what's the point of being messianic? You might as well be Christian. So, right. You know, all the Christian stores will sell messianic music. Yeah. So that's probably why they like I told you the other day, you know, my former pastor, he he seen that name Messianic, and I, I didn't know what it was, and I come to not really think much of it. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not serene. It's you're a watchman. You know, and I don't know. I like I said, I was I was real ignorant. You know, at that time, so I was like. But still, I, I, you know, as a Christian, you think, yeah, they're not our denomination, but yet we're supposed to be the same body. So why is he telling me to stay away from this body? And you know, what's wrong with it? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's all a it's all a corporate thing anyway. So how are you going with the letting them have it? I'm letting them have it. <laughs> yeah. Talk to, a, yeah, I talked to a guy tonight. Um, I talked to a guy yesterday at work, and then I said, "You, you heard the good news, right?" And he, yeah, I caught him off guard. I, you know, these are these are guys that have never, either have never or maybe have had very little understanding, you know, when it comes to, as they say, religious stuff, you know. So I talked to the guy uh, yesterday. I said, you heard the good news, right? And he's like, no. You want to hear the good news? He's like, what is it? And the whole time, he's thinking I'm getting ready to tell him a joke. So I, I'm sitting here telling him, you know, that he will promise to put his Torah in our hearts and our minds, and, and that was the fulfillment of Yahushua on the stake. And, you know, and if we come to him and, and, and get immersed, then then he, then he we have that circumcision of the heart, and we will do, we will guard his Torah. He's like, what? Where's the, where's the punchline? Where's the punchline? <laughs> I said, no punchline, man. That's it. It's that's the good news. I said, you know, all the good stuff that you 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 understand that you should do. You know, when you were a kid, you knew that the difference between right and wrong. That was a promise. That was a gift given to you. Yeah. So, so I talked to a guy tonight, and uh, I said, hey, you heard the good news. And he said, what? I said, did Bill, Bill tell you the good news? What good news? And he started talking about this, I don't know, this, this part or this piece that he had to tear off and replace or something. I don't know. And I just went like that to him. You know, I was like, ah, oh, that, that didn't work. So I was talking to Yahushua about it. How do I approach this guy? How do I approach this guy? And it, it, and he said, tell him it's a gift of love. It shows, the, it's a gift of love, and it shows you how, it teaches you how to love. Yeah. Oh, that works. The guy loves his family. Yeah. So uh, at, uh, at 1 o'clock break, I ran up, up to the Fit and Weld office, and he's sitting, out, sitting down, fit, uh, filling his time card out. And... Uh, I shared the good news with him. Yeah. 
And it, it threw him off guard, man. It just threw him. Threw him way off guard. He, he says, well, I can't. He says, what's the first floor? I've never heard the first floor. And I said, well, you know, he is Yahuwah. You have no other mighty ones before him. You don't bow down to images. You keep his name. You don't, you know, you proclaim his name. You use it. And you keep Sabbath day. And he says, yeah, the Sabbath. I can't do that. I work on the weekends. I said, oh, well, that's why I don't work overtime. Yeah. So, any you know, it's letting them have it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, uh, it's a spiritual battle. I mean, you can sense it. It's, it's, it's alive and well. Yeah. But tonight, tonight was draining. It, it really was. Yeah. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to be home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand. You know? Yeah. The wife letting her have it. Yeah. Maybe I don't understand it completely. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But I was upstairs doing some work and... Uh, She's she's just going off on the kids, just going off. Yeah. And I sit down and I got a smile on my face, you know. And I said, "That's just music to my ears." I mean, it's just beautiful. She said, "What? What? When I hear you screaming at the top of your lungs at the kids, I, it's just beautiful to me. I enjoy it." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm not good at letting people have it. <laughs> I don't know. So what response did you get? She went, ah, ah. But, wait. And I said, I'm just letting you have it. Just letting you have it. <laughs> you know? Well, you're not supposed to tell them you the benefits <laughs> to start with. And, uh... All right. If you say that, that's music to my ears, you're just looking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not good at it, man. I'm not yeah. good at it. Yes, I don't know. Yes. I, um, it's quiet. Just a second. Can we? Can we? My wife just gave you a solution. <laughs> She just heard oh, what you sorry. did and she, had, she, right. she whispered me a solution. So I said, come in and you can tell him. <laughs> Next time you hear your wife going off at your children. I know because that's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said, you shouldn't just let her have it. Just go up there and um, say to her, how can I help you, darling? What can I do to help? <laughs> I know Mark does that to me. And then I know he's letting me have it. <laughs> Even though <laughs> he doesn't tell me. <laughs> Letting someone have it means putting yourself off, putting off all your own judgments, all your own arguments. Because if you're in the middle of an argument, the, yeah. reason, the reason there is an argument is because both people have their own sides. Right. And it's just going like this the whole time. And it can start really small, and it gets bigger, then it gets bigger, and then it gets bigger, and then eventually someone's got to leave and get divorced just keeps going. Um, right. So eventually somebody either has to win the battle, otherwise it just keeps going. So eventually someone has to give in. And the one that gives in lost the battle. Right. But if you do it on purpose, you don't, like, you lose, but it settles everything down. And then you have to hear about it all and go through it all, why you're so wrong, and you just nod there like a patsy, like an idiot, if, because you're both, you're both as bad as one another, somebody has to bow out and let the other person have it. And you can't come back afterwards and say, I'll let you have that. You just got to... See, Yahushua wants to bring peace. Yeah. And because we're 
flawed people. We're idiots. We do stupid things and we say things we don't mean. Um, you know, Satan comes through us sometimes and we hurt each other. You know, you got to just go in there and be wrong. Right. So Yahushua wants to bring peace. Well, you know, what I, what I said to her did bring peace. <laughs> I don't know if it... I don't know if it was the right way to say it, to letting her have it, but it brought peace. <laughs> she would have wanted to smash you. <laughs> I, I would have. Um, I remember when I first, I think it was when Mark and I were engaged and I came along to the circus because I was in love with Mark um, and that was the only reason. Um, and they were talking about letting people have it. And I was so confused. They tried to explain it to me in so many different ways. And I thought that it was just the weirdest thing I'd ever heard of. <laughs> and I just did yeah. not get it. Now I do. Um, but you have, I don't know if you have the saying over there in like retail, like the customer's always right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's kind of like that. Mm. Everyone else is always right. Mm. You just got to smile and... Oh, okay, that's lovely. Oh, yeah, so if someone's yelling in your face, a customer comes into a shop, like you work in a shop, and a customer comes in and they start abusing you because something wasn't the way they wanted or whatever, you just smile and go, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Like you just, even if you know that they are completely blatantly wrong, you still, for the sake of your business, you have to smile and say, I'm so sorry, what can I do to help and how can I fix that for you and all that. It's just like living your life doing that. <laughs> that's the way I looked at it, like, you know. Just being the doormat and everyone, and well, no, you know, seeing that everyone else is always right and that you're always just trying to make sure that you, you know, you're doing the right thing for everybody else, and then in the end, you're you win because, well, in a retail situation, if it was your business, you'd win in that point, even though you look like you've just taken a hit from someone, you've won because you've now won that person's business because they can see what you've done for them. So, in life. If you let people have it and just let them always be right, you've won their love and affection and everything because they'll just see that you, they can trust you and that they, um, you know, like they'll become more comfortable and trusting with you. And then they'll start to see things about themselves because they'll realize that nothing they do stirs you up. And they'll start to go, well, it must be me. Oh, my goodness. You know, so just like a customer who will come in, if they can't stir you up in the shop, other customers will be looking at them going, oh my goodness, they're crazy. Look what they're doing to you. I can't believe you just put up with that. But if you abused them back or got into it with them, every other customer in the shop's then looking at you as you're a bad guy as well. So in your life, if you just live your life like that, everybody else is always right. You know, it doesn't mean you don't speak the truth. Like, that's the thing. You always just speak the truth, but you're saying it in love and, and nicely. Like you would to a customer, if they came in and told you something that was really wrong, you can just say, I'm so sorry that you thought that. It's actually this, you know, you can the way you say things and the way you d take things. And so that's just the way that I've been able to process letting people have it is just the customer's always right. So everyone's always right. And it's just the way you handle it as though you were, you know, owning your own little business, which is yourself. And, you know, then people see, you know, the love that, Yahushua's love coming through you and they start to see things because you're just letting them have it all the time, you know, yeah. like you never have an argument with them about it or you never have it out and mm. hey, lovely. they so. can't rile you up. Yeah. yeah. They can't rile you up. Yeah. The other good analogy is to face that everybody's crazy. <laughs> you know, um, if you were, all well, the baby's up. If you were to fight, if you were to, you know, come across, uh, do you call them disabled over there? A bus full of disabled people? Mm -hmm. You know, the spastic people, you know, mental people. If you came across, if, you know, if you had them walking past you and they're doing all this at you, you wouldn't be judging them or having a go at them or, right. you know, they could come and almost slap you in the face and you wouldn't be offended because, you know, they're mental. Right. Well, you just got to face it, everybody's mental. <laughs> you know, it's hard. So, particularly when it's in your own home. <laughs> so, particularly when sometimes it's your own spouse. 
you know, you just... I can understand it at home. So, <laughs> yeah, so you know what I mean? It's like a... Yeah. It's, it's dealing with one another in love. So, yeah. totally putting yourself off and... It's the only thing that works. You know? Well, yeah... You know, when I, when, I, when I told Jennifer that, you know, she understood. I was completely in love, you know, saying it in love and just being sarcastic with it, though, you know? Can't be sarcastic. Can't, huh? Can't be sarcastic. Can't be you can't? Be, you can't be a bitch. Oh. <laughs> Because she's all just, the fun out of it. Because you're, <laughs> you're picking out, you're picking out, you're letting her know that her behaviour is not good enough when she's she's got the kids all day and she's in the middle of it. You know, if she goes, you know, let her give you the kids for a whole day and let her go out and see how you are when when she gets back after a whole day of it, and then then let her go. Oh, you're doing that really well, aren't you? That's music to my ears, and you just want yeah. to smash her <laughs> because you've been dealing with all this crap all day. And you come home after having to think about nothing but yourself and your job and your space and who you're going to and what you're doing. And you come home to this, you know. Some days everything's in order. Some days there's just a whirlwind of chaos because children are unpredictable. The more there are, the more mess there is. So she doesn't need your sarcasm. She needs your help. <laughs> so sometimes I just get home and just say, where are we up to? What do you want me to do? Well, when Some... I get home, everybody's sleeping. Oh, well, that's easy for you then. <laughs> it's uh, easy. Easy, mate. There's, there's three guys on the couch right now. <laughs> really? And you got enough beds? <laughs> oh, we got beds. It just, that's the way it's always been. Yeah. 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 I, when I come home, it's, I always go through the house, count heads, make sure everybody's accounted for and then yeah. kiss, kiss the wife and then come down and start reading or whatever you know yeah until i can wind down yeah, yeah. It, it's it's the uh it's the waking up part that you know because i'm already their day's halfway done mm -hmm. you know and I'm, I'm waking up and i'm trying to get my senses and yeah. trying to start to function and it's coming at you from six different directions, seven different directions, you know. I'm surprised you could sleep. Oh. Isn't it noisy? It's, it's not a problem. Huh. Hmm. This morning, this morning, Zach was, Jennifer was in, had a run to town, and then um, Zach was here with the little ones. And I remember seeing Ben run in my room a couple of times, so yeah. he woke me up this morning, but that's all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so you, um, yeah, you, you letting someone have it um, and not telling them means you don't let on that you're doing it. Like right. she 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 can tell if she's in in a flurry and she's frantic with the kids, she doesn't need you to remind her. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's letting her have it would be to, to see what's going on and to think, well, what can I do to help here? Right. Because, like, it makes you feel it makes you feel okay because she's the one that can't handle everything. So then you feel like, okay, well, I'm okay. I don't know. I would never behave like that. You know, I'm all right. I'm cool. Until it happens to you. So there's always this thing going on. Yeah. So if she's behaving in a way that brings her down here, which causes you to feel happy, then you can go, okay, well, how can I help, you know, come down as well, you know, instead of staying up here. Because then if you let her know, oh, that's music to my ears because I'm up here, you know, and you're stuffing it up down there. Can't you get get it together? Behave yourself. She's then got to, you know, insult you, or do something to bring herself back up in line with you. Whereas if you just come down, and you know, what can I do to help? 
you know, you're covering yeah. what's going on. Yeah, you know, it's not yeah. the, the expression is cover sin with love. I'm not, not what she's not doing. What she's doing is not sin, but covering the chaos with love. Covering sometimes it might be sin, but cover each other's sin with love. You know, because you've got nothing to prove yeah. to each other after this many years. So it's like yeah. you just cover it with love. Uh, and Yahushua wants all his people to get this together because everybody's got the knowledge. You know, everybody's you know reading and knows what they need to know and you know you can read the scriptures to you blue in the face but if you don't behave nobody's going to see it you can tell people all day every day have you heard the good news and that's great but if they actually say well no can you lead me through it can i come and have meals with you can i come and you know and then they see the state of your family that's what i'm always saying and thinking about they just come to us and go oh what the hell is this chaos you know right so it's we have to get it together in our homes yeah. so that our whole family is a good witness, you know. So letting them have it. But Chris will tell you more about it. You're, you're Skyping with him tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah, tomorrow evening. That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll let us have it. <laughs> <laughs> he lets everybody have it, mate. Yeah. Because if you don't, you lose your peace. And he doesn't want to lose his peace for anybody. Huh? Hey. What did you say? I said by letting people have it, you keep your peace. Right. And he doesn't want to lose his peace. Right. So. Yeah, I was, I was telling you when I, when uh, that guy shared the fossilized customs with me. Um, that uh, that set me off real quick. You know, it was just it was it was in, within three days that I, it was just I was done with the circus. I mean. It, You know, I, I told you I went to a pastor's house, and he just, he didn't have no answers. Nothing at all, you know. And uh, so I went to work that, that night, and I, you know, I was going through the shop on the forklift, and and, and I cried out. I, just, I said, I want to see. Just just let me see. You know, I want, I want the truth. Let me see. And... Uh, I remember getting off, off the forklift, and uh, there's a back shelf of material that I, that I have to handle. And uh, when I got off the forklift, I, you who told me, the names I have been given are attributes. Well, you know, you ask, you ask any pastor or, or anybody that has any, any kind of knowledge, they'll say, well, he's got many names. And they can probably tell you half of them. Well, that's just you just need his name to know the attributes of who he is. Man, I I tell you what, no joke. I I went back to that back shelf, and I and I sat down and I kneeled down to get something, some material, and I just started crying. I just started crying, right there at work. Yeah, I'm, I'm wiping my, my tears off and I'm looking around, see if anybody's coming around, around the corner. And, and, oh, geez, was that, it was just too much. It was overwhelming. And, uh, wonderful. When it, when it got to about, uh, time of Christmas, though, uh, Jennifer's family was a big, you know, big into Christmas, of course. Yeah. And th this happened in, I think, August. When all this came about, and I made a choice then not to not to go back to the circus, not to not to do anything with it. And it, she started. She kept asking me, "Well, what are you going to do? You going to go or why?" And I'm like, I can't. I can't go. 
Especially being at the pastor's house. Yeah. You're under that authority. It's his house. Yeah. It's a hideous feeling, isn't it? Year before last, we went and did Christmas just because we hadn't seen our family for so long, and uh, we were encouraged just to go and love them. And because we could, yeah. we previously years and years ago, when we read about fossilized customs and everything, we were so angry at. We weren't angry at our families; we were angry at their reaction. And we we cut our parents off for a couple of years, and uh, we've since made it right, and everything's great now. But. It's not great, but um, that's gone. But uh, we so we went to Christmas, and you know, it's hideous, you know, sitting around the Christmas table, and you know, and the ki the kids, the kids are just like, what's all this? You know? Right. Because so we've told them since birth that you know, it's naughty. Yeah. It's hideous. Right. So we said to them, look, you're going to get presents. That's okay. Just say thank you. You know, so. yeah. You that, could be in whatever, whatever religion you like, but once you step out of Christmas, ooh. <laughs> yeah, really dark. Yeah, you're in the poo. Right, that's the big one. Yeah. So. How can you walk from that? And they take it so personal. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Go on. It's been a whirlwind, man. It, it really has. You know? I mean, for the good. Yeah. For the best, you know? Yeah. And then coming to understand what uh, letting them have it truly means, that, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. What does it mean? Staying humble. Yeah. Yeah. It just means letting have everybody just let them have what they're having. Yeah. It's for example would be um like I used to get all these weird and crazy hairstyles when I was living at home. And I'd come home and none of my family would say anything. They wouldn't let me have it. Her family, uh, my wife's family doesn't let me have anything. You know, you're not allowed to have who you are. It'd be like, it would be like standing up and singing a song and nobody even looks at you. Or at the end of it, they just don't respond or they won't let you have it. And not because you want anything, not because you want an applause or not because you want anything, but the fact that they won't let you have anything. You know? Nobody lets me have anything. You know? Yeah. Chris is the same. Yeah. Nobody lets Chris Nobody. have anything. Yeah. Not allowed to have anything. No fun, no, no. joy, no laughs if it's serious. Yeah. This is this is a serious yeah. faith. Serious walk. Yeah. You can't be laughing yeah. and joking around about this stuff. You wait till you meet him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People take everything he says so personally on Facebook because he types in capitals just because it's easy. <laughs> and when they meet, when they when you meet him. It's just funny. It's just, it's just a jolly old man, mate. You know, yeah. It's uh, he doesn't want to hurt anybody. But when there's truth, to, when there's truth to be told, you gotta tell. You gotta tell it. Right. So. Right. Yeah. So, he, yeah. He's uh, I've had to explain, I think, or try to explain. Here I am trying to explain to a couple of brothers over here how I think Chris is, but I, I'm still trying to understand how to let people have it, you know? Yeah. Uh, we're, I don't know if we're, we're taught different than you guys over there. You know you know what I mean? I think we're, maybe not. I think we're more of a... Taught what? Huh? Taught what? Um... You mean we're more laid back? Yeah, you know, it, it just, you don't have, uh, what's, what's this, how can I say it? You're thicker skinned over there than we are, maybe? 
We don't have a stick up. We don't have a stick up our ass. Huh? <laughs> we don't have a stick up our ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I've, I've spoken to Adam about that. He reckons Americans are really tight. They're like they're really serious. <laughs> it's very hard to get a joke out of them. Yeah. Whereas uh, so Aussies are just you know laid back. Right. Uh, which says it's good and bad points. So. so. No, it's just um, when you're when you're learning and you come into this that uh, everybody's got different kinds of gifts, and um, Chris has a particular gift of dealing with behaviour because he's um, been hairdressing for over forty years, all day every day dealing with people and their behaviour. He um, can help people in that area because most people who come into this scene are, uh, they might be into the Torah, but they don't know how to behave. Um, it goes into their head because that's what they're taught in religion to learn all this stuff. So, of course, when you come to Yahushua, it's the same scriptures almost. So you, you just learn it. But to behave it, to behave, people don't know how to behave love. You know, um, is it just being lovely to everybody? No, you know, lovely to everybody. You're just normal. You don't have to be walking around with smiling all day. No, it's not. You know, it's just normal being normal, whatever that is. But you, you have this inside you. You have Yusha inside you. And so sometimes you'll say, say this or say that. But the main thing is. Everybody out there is trying to intertwine everybody in their own dramas. Like tentacles, trying to entwine everybody. Grab you into their conversation, into their gossip, into their feeling. If somebody can't pull you into their feeling, because you're letting them have their, you're letting them have their feeling. You're not trying to take their feeling away from them. Like the other day, your wife was angry at the children. Well, don't try and take her feeling off her. Let her have it. Because if you get involved, you get screamed at. If you don't get involved, Yahusha deals with her. Yeah. And then, but I mean, by you just coming in and saying, can I help? You know, that's not, that's not um, getting involved with her emotions. That's just getting involved with the children, you know. What I mean by letting her have it is don't get involved with her feeling. Don't get involved with her What's going on with, yeah. with her? Yeah. If, there's well, pra- if there's practical things to do around the house, then you just step in and say, okay, I'll help you. Everyone calm down, I'll help you. But you know, if you yeah. step away and not be a smart ass or sarcastic, then Yahusha yeah. has to deal with her. And he might, and then she might come at you and try and rile you up because she's riled up. But if you let her have that as well, you know, She's got to deal with that one as well. And then it goes on and on and on until you realise that I'm not getting rolled up by any of this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It takes practice. Yeah. Oh, it takes a lot of practice. It's it's actually facing where your spouse is at. But 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 loving them through it. Because if you're anything like us, someday it's it's either one of us. Because neither of us are there yet. Still practicing it. Right. Because we were told this 10 years ago, but we just thought it was insane. It wasn't important. Yeah, whatever. You know? But you get to the point where it's very important. It's one of the most important things because he, Yahushua may not have said these exact words, but he did that to everybody. He was cool. He just let everybody have who they thought they were. He could walk into par- into pubs, in the bar, into the temple, into everything. He just walked in and he just let everybody have who they were. He didn't judge them. He didn't try and upset anybody. You know, they were always coming at him with their questions and trying to catch him out and have a go at him. And he was just cool. He told the truth when he had to be told too. You know? Oh yeah. So, so, as far as the behaviour goes, it's taught me a lot about how I, th- you know, how you should yeah. win. You know. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I think. 
sitting here listening to you guys talk about it and and evaluate my myself. I spend so much time at work. I could let guys have it there. Yeah. Because that's that's where I'm at. You know, ninety percent of my time. Yeah. And yeah. it it's the coming home part that it the like you were saying the other day, you know, it's it's um, you gotta adjust, you know, to a different uh, different setting. And that's I mean, you only spend uh, roughly three hours a day, four hours a day with your your family. Yeah. During the week, it's it's you know it's it makes it difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not like I got five, six, seven hours at night with them every night. You know, because I don't. You find it hard with the children because if you've only been this this three years, how old's your eldest? Fifteen. Yeah. So he would have been twelve yeah. when yeah. you came in. Yeah. So he had a hard time yeah. in the transition. No, that's that's been the most uh, wonderful aspect. Um, the kids have just they're on board. That's great. Right. Yeah, they don't uh, they don't miss the, the the pagan festivals at all. Probably because they, they were in school. Well, we we only started homeschooling uh, last year. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right. You know, so I mean, they still have questions. You know, like, what if our, we see our friends and they ask us, "What'd you get for Christmas?" Well, tell them you don't acknowledge it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's no big deal to you. Tell them what you think. Just tell them we get presents all the time. We don't need to. We don't need to do Christmas. We get presents all the time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're spoiled. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. About, oh. Yeah. No, but it's it's really thankful for that, you know. Yeah. And then Jennifer, when it came to the Christmas tree, man, I I didn't say nothing to her about it. Didn't say nothing. And then she, she started reading the fossilized customs a little bit, and she came across that, and she said, well, that's got to go. That's got to get out of the house, right? I was like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's... Well, see how it's much better when they learn it for themselves? Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. If, if you had come in with it, you probably would have got in the way because it's something you're trying to institute. Whereas if they read it for themselves in the Torah or, you know, fossilized, which is just taking it out of the Torah, reading it from the Torah, then they have an experience themselves. Well, see, where the the issue is, is as far as me, uh, like I told you the other day, you know, blowing blowing the the shofar, saying, wait, 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 wait. Um, the really the only studying or really reading that they're they're doing is during when we get get together at Sabbath on Sabbath and read. That's it, normal. Well, I, I understand that, but I think it's trying to get everybody to feel about the Torah the way you do. No, I, what I want, what I'd like to see is them reread in the light of Yahusha. You know, because it's going to, it's it's all new. You know, and that's again, you know, it's it's new. Yeah. You know, to to help overcome. That, that personal mindset that we were programmed with, I, that's too much for me. I can't. I can't do that. I ha, I have enough. You know, but as I told you, I get Yahushua laid it on me to knock it off because I was getting it was becoming too personal to me, and warning them about doing stuff. And that's 
you know, you know, so I did, and it's, yeah. but it, yeah, I don't know. Well, the only way to bring people out of the madness that they're in is, um, people don't respond to anything except love. Your children right. don't respond to anything but love. You can yell and scream and get angry and they just get afraid. I know. It's only when you love them. I know. You, you got heaps of kids, you all, you'll understand. <laughs> so, you know, it's only when you sit down and they, you love them and they can see it in your eyes that yeah. they'll, they melt. Love is the only thing. I mean, how, how did Yahushua get 12 people, I think it was 12, to just up and leave their jobs and follow him? Right. You got wives and kids and jobs and you know. You gotta ask if he came past us today whether we would drop everything and follow like, like you know, they just went and followed him. There must have been something in his eyes, there must have been something that they felt when they saw him. They just followed. Stuff like right. this, I'm going with you. You know? So he's in us. So we've got to we've got to look into their eyes and we've got to, you know. If we have to discipline them, we discipline them, but we've still got to look in their eyes and they've got to know that there's love there. Otherwise, when there is discipline and there's hate, or not hate, when there's discipline and there's, there's anger, anger is the right word, they, they won't feel it if that's just the norm. If we're always angry at them, then, you know, how are they going to feel any different? They'll just think we're angry all the time. So the love's the only thing that will change them. Who's just loving us? Right. Through, through them. Yeah. Well, I've found, can't always, can't always do it, stuff up all the time, but we're all practicing. So. How much, how much, uh, how much studying do you, do you do actually do? Personal study? Yeah. For myself, not much. Not much. Really? Because um, I'm too busy doing all the the video things and the you know trying to set up a radio station now and you know it's it's full on you know so I'm constantly in the word but yeah. as far as sitting down with the scriptures for myself Amy started sitting us everybody down at breakfast and we read uh, a proverb every morning which is really good starting the day oh, yeah. with a proverb. Because there's right. 31 proverbs apparently, and there's 31 days in most months, so we read a proverb every day. I think uh, when we finish that, proverbs we might go on to Psalms. From what Lou was saying last episode, the Psalms are really clean you, wash like clean water. So I think we'll do that. But um, no, not a lot of time, not much time, because he's given me certain gifts to use. Right. And I get very frustrated because I know there are hundreds, if not thousands, of believers out there who have gifts that are better than my, well, not better, but they, the things I'm trying to do, they're probably qualified to do, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And yet, I can't find any of them, <laughs> you know? And so I'm, like, always having to learn stuff. I don't know how to set up a radio station. I didn't know how to do video work a couple of years ago. Like, I've got to learn how to do all this sort of stuff. When I'm right. positive, I'm positive. There's probably somebody sitting there who's qualified, or at least knows how to do what I do much better. And yet, nobody they, they won't come out of the woodwork, and you know, yeah, we'll come and help you. You know, give it. You know, yeah, well, you know, the backup, the support. Let's come together. Or if they do, they're doing it over there, doing something other, some bizarre thing for something else. You know, it's not. They won't. No, people won't come into unity and say, yes, I know how to do that. And I can probably do it better than you, so let me. You know, so it's. I'm well, telling you right, man. I'm telling you right now, man. You're, you're in Australia. I'd help you, but you're in Australia. Everything's online these days. Why? What do you know how to do? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I can help. <laughs> of course you can. Of course you can. You can just help. That's all I can do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah. So all of us would love to have more time to just sit there and chill out and pray and read. Um, but when you've got very young children as well, often that's very hard. So 
I don't, uh, you know. It's what it is. Yeah, I don't give myself too much of a hard time about that now. you just got to keep going. Keep going. Right. Read the word when you can. Um, yes. Do, doing his work, you know. Um, yep. I have, like, I was filled, like, growing up, Christian, lots of church, lots of circuses, Christian school. So I had a lot of the word in me. Oh. So, um, so when I came into, you know, into Yahusha, um, people would refer to different scriptures and I'd know what they're talking about. So right. I, um, obviously it's different reading it when you've got his spirit in you, but I, it, yeah. it still means I can still flow with the conversation. Right. That's why I can flow with what Lou's saying because I know the scriptures fairly well. Wouldn't, I don't yeah. know, I can't quote them or know where they are like he does. He's just, you know, amazing. But, uh, you know, yeah, I can flow with it. So I, um, you know, I'd run myself down for a few years and I'd say to Chris, I don't know why Yahushua has chosen me to do this, to speak to Lou. I don't have anything intelligible to say. You know, I just sit there and nod most of the time. And Chris said to me, and Chris really helped me with that because he said, well, have you seen half the people, uh, Messianic people on Facebook and on the internet and stuff? Have you seen the way they talk and how they butt in on each other and they're all arguing and everything? I said, yeah, half of them are nuts. He said, well, can you see now why maybe you who should chose you to ask Lou all these questions? You know? Because you know a bit, but not a lot. You know, not enough to um, butt in, take over, try and make the show about you. You know, yeah. so I don't want to do that because I've got nothing to say much. So um, that really helped me to realise, you know, Yahushua can use anybody. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's uh, it's really encouraging. So you're um, going you're going full bore with the radio station, huh? Well, yeah, uh, it's an internet one, and I'm still researching it and uploading things, um, giving it a bit of a tinker. But um, it's not; it won't be a lot of actual work programming it because you, you can program a month at a time. Oh, there you um, go. See, we won't be doing live, you know, broadcasts or things like that. It'll all be pre-recorded stuff. So. And I've tried to reach out to other people who have radio stations or are messianic people and that, but you never hear anything back. So it's like, well, it's, if you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. <laughs> so, you know. Okay. Then, yeah, why not? So. Wow. Yeah. So and it's cool, good. You know, he, he wants to use everybody's gifts or whatever what he does. So, yeah. For his yeah. esteem. I talked to Larry about uh, uh, LD. I said LCD. It's LDC Carpenter about skyping one of our meetings. Yeah, how'd that all go? Uh, he's like, well, you know, I, that would be great, but let's let's try to get some more things figured out, get it a little bit more polished. I, okay, I, I'm not gonna twist his arm. It's what it is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that actually would work, though. I mean, would we have to have the camera back far enough to where, where do we just? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You just set the camera up in the corner of the room, so you can see the whole room. Okay. It'll just be a fly on the wall. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. I didn't know how that would work. <laughs> yeah. Well, just imagine there were like half a dozen people sitting behind you now. <laughs> That's true. I mean, they don't, right. have to be, they don't have to be sitting there looking at me. They'd just be sitting yeah. around in the circle or in the lounge room. Or however, I don't, that's where you'd have to work it out. Bring the computer into the lounge room or bring the chairs closer or whatever you got to do. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Sounds like you're going to be busy, though. 
Real busy. Oh, we're always busy. It's fine. How'd you become a hairdresser, man? Um, I was doing a part-time... What was I doing? Uh, during year 12, when I was at school, I was 18. Year 12 yeah. at school, and a friend of a friend, a friend of my mum's or somebody used to get their hair cut by Chris and Victoria, and they said they're looking for a, uh, just a shampoo boy, somebody who's... um. They're preferably looking for a guy who's not gay and who wants to uh, just work on uh, Sabbath and uh, what the S day. So, yeah. So I went and applied and did it. And I was just totally nuts. You know, dropped things and wrecked things and was angry and all sorts of things back then. I was just a kid. But um, I was still at school. And at the end of that year, when I finished school, they said, why don't you come and do an apprenticeship? I said, no, I'm I'm going to the Institute of Music, you know. And uh, so I went off to do that, and that lasted a few months. It lasted about six months, I think. But um, I still kept working once a week with them. But they, one of their apprentices, full-time apprentices, went to London. And uh, that was Leanne. She went to London, and they were going to be put out. So they said, why don't you come on and help us for a few months, full-time. And I was starting to drop out of the college at the Institute of Music because I was I was never taught how to study or how to, I never had any respect for teachers or anything so I, I was in a very sheltered pretentious Christian school you know not taught you know everyone was just up themselves and uh, so when I stepped out into the real world and got told study this learn these scales bring you back by tomorrow and I was just like oh, stuff that you know and I was with worldly people, you know, and I was just too good for them. So, because I was a Christian. So, anyway, I fell out of all that and couldn't stand it. So, I went and worked with the Hiltons for a couple of months. And during that time, they said, why don't you come and get a real job, mate? You're not going to be a rock star for a while. So, I did. And I uh, strung them on more and more. Now, I'm not starting my apprenticeship yet. They said, we need you right now. It's Christmas. No, no, no. I want to go and have a holiday first. You know, like just it's a total bastard, mate. So he gave him hell for ten years while they trained me, and uh, yeah. So yeah, they're like my no. parents. They're like my second parents. So, they sound like good, real good people, man. Oh, they're they're lovely. I've never met anybody like them. So well, that, you know, that's that, that's I think what's probably upset me the most was. Jennifer's aunt and uncle, they were like second parents to me, you know, and here they are, the, the pastor and the pastor's wife, and that was just, uh, and, and to try to share this with them, you know, and my mom has got to know them a little bit, and she actually talked to uh, her aunt about it, and she sat there and flat out told her to stay away from us and not get involved. And here she is, a couple of weeks later, be you know getting immersed in it, you know, in, in Yahusha. And it's just, you know, it's one of those where you're reading the same book. How can you not see this stuff? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a. I understand why they can't see it. It's the same reason all of us couldn't see it. Mm. You know, deception. Yeah. But that's been the that's probably been the hardest part. Mm. You know, the most frustrating aspect of it. Yeah. I don't mind. You know, I don't mind people tell me I'm in a cold. That's fine. Yeah. Who do I serve? I don't go anywhere. You've been brainwashed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brainwashed. You're a heretic. Have you looked at yourself lately? <laughs> oh, you can't do that. you got to let him have it. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> i got to have the sarcasm once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. But uh, I meant to them. You can't do it to them. I know. I understand that. It's got to let everybody have it. If Larry and the other guys don't want to come around and want to 
polish their talks a bit more, then let them have it. This is fine, guys. No. Whatever, mate. No dramas. We can Skype. It's no problem. You can get all the goodies. Not from me. <laughs> it's just in the love. Just get the love. It's all about love. Yeah. Uh, it is. What are we going to call it's... this one? Huh? What are we going to call this one? What do you mean call this one? What are, gonna... <laughs> what are we going to call this show? <laughs> this is going to be a show? <laughs> <laughs> I like to I like to make everything a show because uh, people, you know, you gotta have some time off though, right? Well, uh, it's not work. It just records itself. <laughs> I didn't. I'm sitting here on the lounge. Didn't do anything. I'm not doing anything. Yep. Right. So, so, besides, if we, uh, you know, if if further down the track you want to have some scripture studies or stuff, you know, maybe we could use it for the radio. I don't know. I'm trying to get different people involved because so far there's a lot of, well, lose the main teacher, obviously, seminars and tour talks and things. We've got some off-the-cuffs on there and uh, a couple of things Adam's done and Colin's show and a couple of things by Hector. I'd like to catch up with Hector. He's a crack, crack up. Have you seen Hector? I've seen a couple of, how many shows you guys done? Two, I think. I think so. One two. or two. Yeah, I gotta catch up with him. He's a cracker. Yeah. I seen he, he posted something on Facebook. Yeah. The other day. I just wish I could get everybody in the same I just wish we could have a fellowship. Like in person. That's not Wouldn't that be something? That's not what we're called to be or do. We're we're sent to the furthermost parts of the earth, but it just would be so much fun. Because yeah. then then every all the there's no limits. There's no technological limitations. There's just love, you know. And it's right. just crack up. Getting together for feast time would just be so much fun, you know. So, but we do the best we can. Right. Yeah. The other thing too no. is the other thing too is that I really like is because every time I want to chat with these people and hear where they're up to and what they're doing and everything, it's got to be me, you know. I, I, you know, I'd like to, you know, uh, put different people together, like uh, you, Chris and you and Hector and like everybody together. And I, I, I don't even want to be in it. You know, I'll just, I'm happy to record it, but Skype is really hard. Even if you sign up for the premium membership and get four or five people together, it's just, because there's so many people blocking, you know, so many signals going through the, the lines that they can't handle it. So it was a waste of money. <laughs> You know, yeah, it might work on radio if you just turned all the if, if everybody turned their videos off and just used the audio. That might work. We'll have to try that sometime. We might be able to get four or five people having to talk. But, uh, otherwise, with video, it's a nightmare. With the way, like yeah. But anyway, yeah. Oh. I'll have a think about it. If we want to do this regularly, we should put out a little regular show. I've got to catch up with Colin too. I haven't seen him for about a year. It's been so hectic. Our life's been so hectic. Getting out of Sydney, caravan. Oh. So. You guys gonna stay, you guys gonna stay in Cuda for a while then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Amy wants to finish her beauty therapy course. We're giving ourselves a goal of a year. We both want to drop a lot of weight, and we want to uh, finish our. She wants to finish her beauty therapy course, and I'm thinking of doing a graphic design course while I'm here. Um, oh, no. Just uh, get a few more qualifications. That way, if we do end up... You know, it's, it's on our heart to come over to America and visit everybody. Um, probably not to live. Lou's probably turned us off living there. But uh, he just says it's best to stay where you are because it's paradise compared to here, what's happening in America. But... Um, we'd just love to come and see everybody. Get over there, hire a motorhome or something, and just go around and visit everybody. Spend right. a few, spend a few weeks or whatever with everybody. Just hang out. Because you know? we got no family here. As you know, your family's not really a family anymore. You know. Um, yeah. And we've got 
our, our, fa our, fam our main family up in Atherton. Our friends and family there, but just, you know, most of our family's in America. So, I'd love to come see everybody. So, anyway, have a think about what you want to call the show. <laughs> I'm not good with those kinds of ideas, man. Oh, you want to leave it to me? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Letting them have it. <laughs> that's for Chris. Hey? That's a, that's Chris, man. That's No, his is off the cuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Letting them have it. <laughs> I just got to remember what, what it actually means. That's all. <laughs> Well, you'll have to speak to Chris tomorrow night and you'll get the whole lo low down. Yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Gonna... You'll love it. Make sure Jennifer's with you. What's that? Make sure Jennifer's with you. Oh, yeah, she will be. Yeah. Yeah, she's... I don't know if she's going to last for another... Her due date's the 5th, and I don't think she's going to last. Yeah. Oh. And uh, put a put a movie on or something with the kids, trying to keep the kids because uh, if you got screaming kids everywhere, Chris will just, oh. Chris won't be able to handle that. They're too much screaming. It didn't bother oh. us because we're used to it and we had it happening here too. But yeah, try and because uh, when he talks to you, you're going to want to concentrate. <laughs> I am. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> it's like it's it's, it's like. Um, like when I talk to Lou, I, I have to concentrate because to keep up with what you should give him and just the flow. Like yeah. Lou, Lou says when he wa he watches the tour talks back, and Adam used to, said to me, I never understood why my dad used to watch himself back on the tour talk. Like didn't he? Like he was there. Why does he have to watch it? And it, it occurred to him that he doesn't have a, he didn't know what he was saying. He doesn't know what he's saying. He watches it back and goes, "Wow," <laughs> you know. You should just, you know, flows through him. So right, it's um yeah. I, you, you I, can tell you can tell watching it. Yeah, you know you can you can see it in his eyes. Yeah, you know, it, it it's yeah it's it's you can tell. Yeah, well I find Chris's gift very similar. Do you? Very similar. It's uh when he's talking to you. It's just out of love, and you just uh, right. you just want to concentrate and lap it up, and, uh, right? Because there's a lot of experience in what he has to say. So yeah, yeah. You, you guys are uh, you guys are our elders, you know. Well, Chris might be. Lou definitely is. I I'm not. <laughs> Why aren't you? <laughs> I'm not an elder. What? Uh, you can't <laughs> say that. No. Too okay. bad, man. <laughs> Too bad. All right. You're there. Sure. If you say You're so. There. If you say so. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I think you've got to be a bit older. I think I think you've got to be an elder to be an elder. I know it's not in age, but I think it is. <laughs> well, how old are you? What? How old are you? 35. Oh, you are? Yeah. I'm your elder. <laughs> well, how do you? 40? 40, yeah. yeah. Can you tell by the hairline? Oh. <laughs> some people who are 20 have a hair. Some people who are 20 have no hair. Hey? Oh, Amy said you can tell by all the kids. You have to be older to have that many kids. Not necessarily. <laughs> So, <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, it was lovely yeah. having with you again, brother. Yeah. yeah. Take care, man. Love you, brother. Love you too, man. It's good catching Take up. Take care. Yeah. yeah. See you later. Yep, yeah, later.